with Cien getting some of the most OP characters such as Awakener and SP Leon. For the global side of Languister, there is still a lot to look forward to, but what we are getting for this month, it can be looked both ways. Some may be excited and some may not entirely. So if you guys are a Shada lover, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, Shada. Two new characters known as Leo Beck and Theon will be arriving to Global. These two aren't really broken by all means, like some of the other characters that we've been getting. They're more like characters that look pretty fun to mess around with, and that's exactly what they like to do. Starting off with Leo Beck, he's part of the Empire, Dark, and Mythical faction. His talent will increase his range and damage dealt the more you star him up. After any allies enter his battle, if the enemy has 15% less HP, then they will take fixed damage. It's not bad. These new mages with natural increased range is starting to become the norm now. But I would say most of the time though, usually if the enemy has 50% or less HP, it's usually a guaranteed single target kill. For his bonds, he will need Neo Lucretia for his toughness bond and Theon for his strength bond. His 1T has a 1 turn cooldown that does 30% more damage to an enemy that has a revive effect, which is alright, but then you see his 2C skill. It has a 5 turn cooldown, but when an enemy dies, then the skill reduces its cooldown by 2 turns as a passive. You can use a skill that basically gives one of your teammates a revive effect that lasts for 2 turns only. When that ally does end up reviving from this skill, this skill won't be able to affect him anymore. However, Leo will lose 10% of his HP every time he takes action when there is an ally being affected from this skill, which can be used only 3 times every battle. The skill is really good. Problem is that it lasts only for a short amount of time, which is 2 turns, and when they do end up reviving, I'm pretty sure they heal for like only 1% of their own HP, so follow up AoEs and fixed damage can easily counter this. His 3C skill has a 5 turn cooldown. For its passive, before he deals AoE damage, he inflicts Hellfire, and what it does is that after he or anyone that has a contract, which is a buff from his revive skill, to enter battle, the enemy will take fixed damage, and if the enemy dies, it increases Leo's stats by 2% to a max of 10%. The Hellfire effect lasts for 2 turns that cannot be dispelled. And when using the skill, it changes 2 buffs into 2 random debuffs for each enemy that were hit. I should also mention that he does have another AoE skill, Black Hole, so that you aren't always relying on his 3C as a mean for providing this Hellfire debuff. Overall, he's not terrible. But using him does make you question what would benefit me more as an option for his 2C skill. Bringing another AoE skill to utilize his 3C passive or bring his unique 2C skill that pretty much gives any one of your team a revive or maybe even bring another single target skill so that you can 3C then be able to make good use of the Hellfire debuff. PvE, you won't really have any issues with this sort of problem all that much compared to PvP. His 2C is really good but it does only last for 2 turns which isn't a lot sometimes and is easily countered by follow up AoEs and fixed damage. If you are able to pick up on those kind of situations, then Leo won't be half bad. If you're new and wound up getting Leo back, he'll be quite useful. He's got some amazing single target skill and you'll be able to make good use of this revive skill. He is also part of the Empire faction, which is one of the strongest factions you can start off with, especially early game. Next, we got Theon, which is by far one of the most fun characters you can use. It might be one of the most annoying characters that you can face. He's part of the Origin, Tactic, and Meteor faction. His talent increases his crit rate and crit damage. After he deals damage to an enemy, he inflicts one stack of Lacerate, which will reduce the healing effects by 50% and after they take action, they take fixed damage for 0.5 times of Theon's attack which can be stacked up to 5 times and only lasts for 3 turns. This fixed damage cannot be resisted by the way, which makes him more annoying. When using a line skill, the furthest tile will place the spin blade tile effect for 2 turns. So when enemies end their turn within one ring of this, they take fixed damage. After the end of his turn, 
if there's a spin blade active on the field, he can choose which direction in which he can send it back to him. And when he does this, enemies will take damage from this as well. If the same enemy takes damage, so I'm guessing when you first use his AUE line skill to attack, then bring his spin blade back while hitting that same enemy on a single turn, they will take 40% more damage. At 3 stars, he will need to wait 3 turns to use the spin blade again. For 5 stars, 2 turns, but at 6 stars, it'll be 1 turn. For his bonds, he will need Julian for his toughness bond and Leo Beck for his strength bond. His 1C is a AoE line skill that has a 2 turn cooldown that reaches 6 blocks long. He is able to select a tile within the skill range that can be turned either up or down if he choose to do so. His 2C is also an AoE line skill that has a 2 turn cooldown but can reach 7 blocks long. Enemies hit by this gain 1 stack of lacerate then afterwards he can move 2 blocks, only on a defensive terrain. Finally his 3C skill, it has a 5 turn cooldown that can reach 6 blocks long and 3 blocks wide from what I've seen. For his passive when hitting 3 more enemies using an AoE skill, you add an extra stack of lacerate. When using this 3C, crit will be increased by 30% that gives one random debuff. And if the enemy has at least 3 stacks of lacerate, you also reduce their attack and int for 2 turns then afterwards, you can move 3 blocks. Man, I'm telling y'all, when I saw him for the first time, I was like, eh, he looks alright. But when I saw his kits, I already knew this guy is going to be really fun to mess around with. Then when I saw who he was voiced by, Yuki Kaiji, 100% I knew I have to get him. Much love to him. One of my favorite Japanese voice actors of all time. But yeah, if you're ever up against Theon, no doubt this guy will be troubling to deal with. To add even more on top of that, he has access to the goblin soldiers, making him even more annoying. His AoEs won't really do a whole lot of damage, but the effects that he will be providing on the enemies might be insane. Simply, he's there to just annoy your opponents by stealing their buffs, AoE spam, and deal lots of fixed damage. And that's really what his game plan is all about. You want to use him as a way to pressure your opponents, and he does that really well. Especially since he can attack really far away, while also being really annoying at the same time. We got two new soldiers coming along with this update. First one we got is an assassin that has their attack and crit rate increased. When battling against enemies with less than 100% HP, their crit damage is increased. Second is a demon soldier that deals magic damage and when attacking, their attack is increased. When they are forced into battle, their physical damage taken is reduced and if they're at 0% HP, they are healed by a certain amount. Both of these are really good. The assassin soldier has that insane damage value and if the enemy has less than 100% HP, then you deal even more when you crit at least. Miss Spirits, I said they were good, but thinking about it again, I would say they're pretty solid. That physical resistance is good, but I feel like there's a whole lot of better options than these guys. For the two new exclusive equipment, the first one we got is a helmet for Lucretia. This gives her 10% more HP, and when a golem ends its turn, the summoner, which most likely refers to Lucretia, will be able to dispel one debuff and gain one random immunity buff. Her golem will be able to attack first, and when Lucretia is dead, the golem gets a 30% damage dealt increase. The second equipment is for the Wandering Duelist. It's an armor that gives 10% defense and when entering battle, she takes 30% less damage. And if the enemy has Chain of Vengeance, then the effect is further reduced by 20%, making it a total of 50% of reduced damage taken. Both are definitely worth the grab. I know a lot of people use Lucretia for good reason that is. And the same can be said for the Wandering Duelist. So if you're one of those people that use her, then this equipment that she'll be getting will be super useful on her. As for new casting skills, we got Shelfania which will increase her int by 5%. When she hits 3 more enemies, she dispels 1 debuff and gives herself damage taken reduced by 15% for 1 turn. Another is for Bozo, increasing his defense and magic defense and when fighting against enemies with 2 or more debuffs, his defense and magic defense is increased by 10% more. Third is for Young Jessica, it gives her more ants and when using her 3c on her teammates for each one that were hit the skill cooldown is reduced by one all the way up to three turns at max last one we got is for silver wolf it increases his attack when entering battle if the enemy does not have any buffs on them he deals 
both fix damage to them. I would say all of them are pretty good, but I think Shofaniel and Bozo got the best ones in this update. For Shofaniel, not only is she dispelling a buff on the enemy, her being able to take less damage as long as she hits 3 more enemies in order to get this buff will be really huge on her. With Bozo, this allows them to be a bit more tankier. <laughs> yeah, that's all there is to it. Well, I guess I could say that the magic defense increase does allow him to deal more damage because the more magic defense that he has, the higher his int becomes. For new banners, it's just the wish banner where you select two characters from language say 1, 2, 3 for a better drop rate. You can always expect this every month. That's all there really is unless Global does something different, like adding a Valentine banner, which is coming up by the way, Valentine's Day. And CN should be getting one soon. So who knows, sometimes Global does stuff differently, so we'll just have to wait and see. For new content we'll be getting, there's a new building that's called the Glorious Plaza. You can get this by reaching Town Hall level 13, and by obtaining this, it will increase the amount of times you can do continuous battles. At level 1, you get 2 extra of these, then at the max level, which is 5, you get a total of 10 extra continuous battles. Dimensional Expedition will be arriving, so make sure to get yourself in a guild if you want some good rewards. Of course, these things don't come free, you'll need to participate in order to get them. As well as Endless Voyage making its return. In the second week, all the Anarchy stages should be unlocked, as well as the Way of the Lost stages. Although I'm not exactly sure if it's on the same week, most likely it will be something like, we'll get all the Anarchy stages first on one of the week, then all the Way of the Lost stages in the next week. There's also this small event where you have to match two of the same set of cards in order to get some rewards. As for new skins, there's not much. We got the Echo of Light for Leo and Theon. They definitely look way better compared to their original design. I like the way how Leo looks. It fits him quite well, and Theon is also really cool as well. But I do wish we could see a bit more of his face. I don't know. I just feel like he's such an underappreciated character, which is why I'm probably saying that. Then for the Macho Lotto, it's a skin for Gustav. Yeah, not a whole lot of new ones, but there are some free run skins that we'll be getting if you guys are looking forward to that. There we have it. That's about everything we'll be getting on the global side of Lamgaster. I didn't expect a whole lot of crazy stuff. I mean, they did went crazy with the amount of content for the fourth anniversary. And I know there will be people asking me about the new characters, whether if they are worth pulling for. In my opinion, this is easily a skip. I mean, Leo isn't all that bad, he's a pretty solid character, and for Theon, he isn't exactly PvE friendly. The reason that you can easily skip this is because there are some future characters that would be more worth the crystals and vouchers. For example, we got Grenshiel, who is a busted attacker while also being really physically tanky. Then we got Agnes, which is a crossover character who is pretty OP, possibly broken even. Then we got Awakener, which CN recently got. But I won't really tell you guys, oh, pull this, skip that, and all that stuff. Besides when I was talking about Jintoki and Neo Zerida, because those two are absolutely broken, like dummy broken. If you guys see a character that you guys like, then try your luck and see if you can pull for them or not. That's my advice to you guys. But if you guys are looking forward to characters that are actually good and meta, then you should take my advice or anyone else's. But yeah, I will keep you guys updated about the new characters every month. But that's all I got for you guys. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. And feel free to let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this update. For me, I absolutely can't wait to pull for Theon just so I can mess around with them. Might even use them for PvP to test them out and all that stuff. And I also can't wait to play the Endless Voyage, which is one of my favorite game modes. But yeah. Thanks for watching, your fellow Z.